Yes guys, what is up? Welcome back to a brand new video here today and some more F1 2020 My Team Career Mode content. Today we are here for the Belgian Grand Prix and pretty much now the start of the second half of the season we did recently have the shutdown period on the calendar in game on my team and we're now back and up and running and this weekend guys, as you can tell by the title, if not then I'll let you know right now, we are taking an engine penalty so um, it's going to get quite complex but guys if you have missed the last episode, check it out, I will leave a link up here in the top right hand corner of the screen guys the Hungarian Grand Prix probably one of the toughest races of the season so far but a really good race like we showed what we're made of around there after really suffering a Silverstone with a lack of pace we did our best around there and it was a really good race if you haven't seen it guys I do recommend you go check it out and also finally guys if you're going to enjoy this video drop me a like and let's get this video underway Right, so here we are then on the calendar. You can see on the right-hand side, we've got a warning there for the worn components on the engine, which I mentioned. We are going to change those. And also, uh, worth noting, at the end of the last episode, we actually bought the Tier 1 of the power unit fabrication. And uh, hopefully at the end of this episode, we'll buy um, Tier 1 of the fabrication on the aerodynamics as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but this is going to help us improve and develop the car a lot more. This weekend, though, you can see on screen, we have a chance of monsoon conditions in the rain, which is going to be really, really interesting uh, um, on Sunday that is and also we have two major upgrades on the way one for the chassis one for the durability and for this race we have I believe a minor chassis upgrade on the car and you can see it has improved us slightly and we are pretty close to Haas now so we are slowly closing in and here is the current state of the engine heading into this weekend so yeah not looking too great and in, we've done what 12 races and we've used up two power units already so it's not looking too good for us and I've got to try and work on it either way I'm heading into practice I'm going to try and use the first two power units from now on for practice um, because they're really worn out and try and save the fresh ones so um, in this session I pretty much just tried to hit the practice program targets on a worn out engine pretty much around here and to be fair it went reasonably well in fairness um, it, the car was working well I could feel uh, this is one of those tracks where even if you feel comfortable the AI naturally a quick around here it's another strong track like silverstone i think they're pretty quick around this track um and also the fact that we are second worst team you could really notice it around here as well but after practice you can see on the acclaim we are level eight mick is level seven and as a team we're level 10 but before qualifying we are going to do the all-important engine change and this is going to mean we are going to have to take a 10 place grid penalty i believe so um it is what it is you know where we're not going to make it I, I thought i did enough work on durability i do believe simulating uh, practice sessions at times has hurt the engine a lot so i need to try and find a way around that in the second half of the season maybe try and do practice sessions more manually so uh, we'll, we'll definitely look into that one either way we move into qualifying and again we're not going to be taking part properly um, all we've got to do is pretty much get onto the track and per the regulations, once you do one lap, that does mean that the engine change takes place. Because what happens is, if you don't, if you change the engine and you don't do any laps, um, the engine change won't take place. It will reset back to your old engine. So it's very important that you go out and at least do an installation lap, so that the game registers that you've used a new power unit. So what I did was I went out on lead mix and non ERS. I just did an out lap, simple as that, installation lap brought the car back to the pits after qualifying and uh, yeah that's going to be the end of our session so we're now going to move into a post qualifying interview which was how you'd expect it to go how's your grid penalty going to affect your strategy going into the race obviously it's not going to make it easier um, it's going to throw us the works but we'll try and make it work with the rain how will not making q3 affect your strategy tomorrow not much because we wasn't going to get there anyway so you know it throws a span in the works in the sense that we're at the back but the rain will help us interesting result today would you say that you're happy with your performance i am not even going to answer that because i didn't actually do anything so yeah appreciate your time and there we go then job done after qualifying and uh, the rivalry breakdown it's not looking great we are tied on points with pierre gas with one race to go <sighs> It's looking a bit tricky, boys. I can't lie. Gaz has got the momentum at the minute and, you know, we're kind of hanging on. You can see on the acclaim we gain a very little amount. Um, but, yeah, we now move into the race. And like I said before, for the first time ever in this game, we will be seeing the monsoon, extreme, heavy, wet conditions. So it's going to be tasty. So let's jump into it and let's get the race underway for round 13. Or should I say round 14, actually, the Belgian Grand Prix. Welcome along then to the Belgian Grand Prix, the race that gave us the maiden victory for the Jordan team in 1998. 
and in the same team, the phenomenal debut of a young Michael Schumacher. There's always something special around one of the many corners of this fan favorite circuit. So here we are once again, ready to go racing through the Ardain Forest. 4.35 miles of long straights, fast corners, and massive elevation changes. It makes this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar, but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well. Simply put it, there really is no place quite like Spa. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Why don't we discuss McLaren? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Albon, Carlos Sainz and Stroll, Verstappen, Bottas, Norris and Lewis Hamilton, Kvyat, Gasly, Esteban Ocon and Giovinazzi. Magnussen, Perez, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. George Russell and Nicholas Latifi, Raikkonen, Grosjean, Schumacher and Martinez. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Here we go then guys, it's time for the Belgian Grand Prix, starting from of course last place, Mick Schumacher is also alongside us, so we're starting from the back here today, but it could be a decent race, and the reason I say that is because the weather forecast is interesting. For the first time ever, from what I can tell, we have what looks to be thunderstorm slash monsoon conditions, which is going to make things really, really interesting. In the past, when monsoon has occurred, you do get the safety car come out. So that's going to be really interesting. So we're going to start on the soft tires. I think we're going to be able to stay on these until the rain arrives. If it doesn't, we'll try and stay out. Even if it means we have really hard tire wear, I'm not going to pit because, you know, there's a, there's a big opportunity here to gain a lot in the pit stops. Hopefully, there's a few cars who start on mediums and we can try and, you know, gain and try and benefit from that. Fuel-wise, we're going to run 0 0.8. I'm going to try and use all the fuel up in this first part of the race while it's still dry. And I'm going to make some final setup adjustments before we jump to the race, maybe add on a little bit more wing, but the setup is mainly designed for the wet conditions. So hopefully, if we can survive this first part of the race, we should thrive in the second part of the Grand Prix in the rain. So let's hope that comes you know, to fruition and our plan goes well. But guys, let's jump into it. Enough waffling. Let's get the Belgian Grand Prix underway. All right, here we go. Getting the revs into the optimal range as the lights are on here. Lights out and away we go. Ooh, what a start. Love that, getting past a couple of cars already. Into turn one, AR braking very early here. We're boxed in on the outside, nowhere we can go. I did just lightly tap the back of the Williams there, but looks like we'll be okay, damage-wise. As we go down towards uh, Rouge. Raikkonen and Grosjean side by side behind us. Easy does it through there. Now we can do some overtake mode. I'm not expecting to have great pace at the moment, at least not on the straight. We are down on, you know, straight speed because of the setup we're running. Both of the Williams here side by side. This could get tasty. Russell versus Latifi. We're going to see if we can find a way through. Looks like Russell's a bit slow off the corner there. Just no way through. They just keep kind of doing a bit of a roadblock, really. We're going to try and get underneath Russell here, but there's no real space for this. These two are still battling away. Here we go, we've got the run on Russell. This time we're going to go down the inside into Puant. Picking up some dirty air, but we do go through and make a move. But look at this now, Raikkonen is re-challenging on the switchback. We go down the inside though and hold on to the position. Let's see if we can get Latifi as well, maybe on the run down to the bus stop chicane. Good start from us though. We've got Magnussen in front on medium tyre, so there is a, at least one car running mediums in this race so far. Here we go. Overtake mode and rich mix engaged. Look at the speed we've got on Latifi here. He's never going to put up a defense. We're going to just walk past, just using a little bit of overtake. But that was quite easy, to be fair. P17. That's exactly what we're talking about. Good start. Now we look at the skies and see where the rain is. Magnuson was a bit slow out of turn one. I might have a chance to get past it. If we run it in overtake, up through Rouge and Radion, we could have a little look. The car gets a bit loose over the top. 
Here we go, I'm using up all my overtake. Oh, look at that, a bit of, bit of rain on the visor. Looks like the rain is starting to fall. Yes, it is. So the rain's here already. We're going to go right on the outside of Magnuson. They're using the soft tyres to get the move done. There we go. Fantastic stuff. Ocon and Perez battling in front. What a start to the race suddenly now. We're right in the mix. P16. Gaining six places in the first two laps. Exactly what we needed. That is why we started on the soft tyres to get ourselves in the race. And now we are. I'm going to try and burn off the rest of this fuel if I can. Before the rain properly arrives because i think we've got a little while of these kind of conditions until the rain falls down the grip is still pretty good enable this lap you can use it when within one second of the car ahead and in the drs zone that's good news for us because i fancy a move on some of these guys maybe engine is overheating so i've got to be careful with that and i've got to be easy with the conditions as well i'm not confident in using overtake up to a rouge anymore the back end is getting a bit loose I think we'll struggle to make moves because of the um, the engine overheating now in traffic and the nature of this circuit. But having said that, the good news is as well, in terms of our rival EPA guys, he's not too far ahead now, so we can definitely aim to try and beat him here today as well. Oh, that was a big one. Whew, breathe. Lost a bit of ground on this lap. Dropped off from Ocon slightly. See if I can crawl back into the RS range with overtake. Oh, getting very close there into turn one looks like the AI is starting to struggle for pace a little bit maybe also someone's going a bit slow in front of us because there's a bit of a hold up only issue is now my engine's going to overheat like crazy a rouge now and already on feeling a little bit slippery these conditions are tough but bear with it I don't think the track is ready for intermediates yet yeah no it's definitely not ready for inters but it's not exactly dry as either ok I think it might be just about time to come and change these tyres Interesting. Looks like it could be time for the Inters then. The track is definitely starting to get worse now. In the last 30 seconds or so, the rain has picked up a little bit. Track's starting to shine as well. I think this could be the lap to be fair for the Inters. Rocking and trying it around the outside, but no way through. The AI are so good in these conditions, I just really can't match them. Just got to try and survive while I can. Oh, big one there. I'm going to pick this lap, I think, and take a gamble. Take a risk. Go for the Inters. I think it's the right time anyway. It feels right. 6.6 .6 off the pace. When you start to approach that 10 second mark where you're off the pace, it's usually time for the Inters. Oh my goodness me. Wow. Whew. Ay, ay, ay. Cars are pitting. We've just given up a position to Raikkonen there, which is far from ideal, but we'll pit then for the intermediate tyres. Make sure they're selected. Get it all slowed down. Wow, my heart is beating like crazy. That was... Whew, my goodness me. Nick is coming in for his stop. Looks like we're going to hold up a load of cars here, which is good. Nick's pitting behind, which is not good. But we'll see what we can do. Here we go. Okay, nice. We're ahead of Perez. We'll be doing one more stop today. One stop left in our strategy. And we've got all those cars who um, stayed out one more lap, so it's not looking too bad. Now we've got to get used to these conditions, see how the car feels. The RS disabled, we've got Perez behind, getting pretty close. I'm expecting him to pass us quite easily. Here he comes. Again, the AI, they'll drive flat out, whereas I have to get used to these conditions, where, whereas you know the AI are already like, coded to drive as fast as possible. Oh, that's a bit deep. That's okay. We get under control. Let's see if I can stay ahead of Perez. We're ahead of Ocon as well. Ay, ay, ay. Perez on the inside there. DRS has been disabled by the stewards. DRS will be offline. I gave Perez a proper squeeze there. Bit, bit dirty, but we move. Okay, the remaining cars are in the pit lane. Let's see how many places we can gain. Looks like we don't gain many, but still, we're not complaining. Run it in a bit wider into turn one. That's not going to help. We're going to rejoin right in the thick of it. There's Gasly in front of us. Our rival, of course. That's pretty good. Let's see if we can get to the back of him. We've got Ocon behind Perez as well. Now he's joined the party. Rouge isn't quite flat. I tried it, but the car gets a bit loose over the top already on. Right. Let's see. We need the conditions to get a bit worse now. I'm better when it's like more... There's more rain in, on the inters. Unfortunately, I don't have the pace. Gasly's pulling away, and uh, we are keeping ahead of Perez and Ocon quite comfortably. 
because in the crucial traction zones I'm quite quick but generally uh, we don't have to pace unfortunately it's as simple as that I need more rain to have any chance even with the worst setup we're just not on the money today which is a shame but that's just the reality yeah the heavy rain has now arrived which is good news for us I'm happy with this this is what I want these heavy rain conditions I think well I was quicker on last year's F1 2019 game in these conditions so hopefully it's the same in this year's game the gap has kind of stayed around three seconds now to Gasly. It hasn't got much bigger. So that's encouraging that the pace has kind of evened out a little bit. Oh, Vettel's in the pit lane. He's the only car to pit for the full wet. Actually, Perez pits as well. That's interesting. Maybe we just missed our cue for the full wet tyre. We'll pit this lap then. Confirmed. We'll receive you at the end of this lap. Right, let's push. Try and give it everything on the end lap. Forecast suggests the rain is going to be lightning up over the next 10 to 15 minutes or so. You should start finding more grip as we clear the standing water. Hmm, interesting. Let's see how many cars pit then. If it's going to line up over the next 10 minutes, then where does the monsoon condition come in? I was going to pit this out for, in for full wet. I think I might s still do so. I just want to see how many cars are in the pit lane. Everyone's pitting, so I think it's the right call to make. I think we're just going to play a safe pit for the wets, but we should be back on the inters pretty soon, which is interesting. But we are about to enter the monsoon period, I'm guessing, so uh, let's get ready for it. Here we go. Full wet tyres at the ready. I don't think we're going to hold anybody up. Actually, to be fair, we might hold a McLaren up there. We're going to hold up Pierre as well, which is good. So we'll hold up a couple of cars, but not as much as the first in. Pierre hold us up. Stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Got held by Pierre Gasly. Here comes Perez and he got the undercar. He went a lap earlier onto the full wet. We've just managed to rejoin in front, so we've stayed ahead. We've got Gasly this time a lot closer. Just going to see what these tyres are like in these conditions. But the conditions are getting worse, so we have to get ready for it. The monsoon conditions are approaching. Our straight line speed is actually really good. I think I could have taken some wing off maybe. Or added some on, sorry. But... If I added more front wing, it would have made the car too unstable. So um, it's also all about balance. Right, I'm hoping we've got some pace because I've done a wet setup, but we just haven't shown the pace yet. Unless our car is... Yeah, unless our car is that far off the pace around here that even with a wet setup, we can barely hold on. I don't know, but let's see now. Visibility is getting pretty poor. Oh. The safety car is out. The safety car is out. We need to form up at a reduced pace. Keep a close eye on that delta time. Make sure to keep it positive. There it is. The condition suddenly just got really bad. The visibility was really, really poor. The rain is really coming down. You can hear it. You can see it. You can't even see down to like turn one. There is no grip on the track. Aqua painting all over the place. I'm trying to keep my fuel pretty low so I'm keeping it in rich mix I don't want to be heavy on fuel for the restart and I've got my on the intermediates I know it sounds weird but this was only meant to last a few minutes and you know you heard the radio message and before the pit stop um, rain will get larger in 10 minutes or so so I'm, I'm bearing that in mind we might actually end the race at inters or conversely we might actually go long and try and everyone goes to the inters and we try and stick it out in the wets and see if we can get a big result that way but for now six laps to go We'll kind of judge you on a lap by lap basis, but we ain't got the pace. That's the that's the big thing here. We don't have pace in the wet, which is a shame. The rain's easing off a bit, but the track is still going to be wet for a while. Yeah, for sure. The the rain is still. I mean, easing off. It's still raining a lot. The visibility is really really poor. I'm running lean now to save a bit of fuel because as the laps tick over, we're getting closer to the end. So I want to be a little bit closer to fuel target by the end of the race. I don't want to have to save while I'm driving, so. We're going to try and get that fuel back up to zero. All right, here we go then. It's time for the restart. Just trying to get a last bit of temperature in the rubber. We're going to need that temp. This is going to be such a key part of the race now. Whether we stay on these tyres to the end or there is a last minute switch to the inters, who knows? It's going to be drama here to the finish, guys. Strap yourselves in, seatbelt on, because this is going to get interesting. Here we go. Fuel now back on target, which is good. Getting ready for the restart here. Rear tires, I know for a fact, they're not fully up to temperature. So I'm going to have to be very careful here. There's five laps 
scraps of fuel remaining. You can see the difference of traction that AI get. Which is something that bothered me in last year's game. It's already happening here, but hopefully we can make up for it elsewhere. There we go, that's a much better turn one. Right, P14, now Rafael Gasly in front. He's the man I want to beat. Mainly, that's all I want in life. Oh, there's no grip. Carry way too much speed there. But look at the AI, how much quicker they can go. They've got all the traction and downfall, so it's easy for them to carry the speed. Perez here looking for the overtake. We're going to have to defend the inside. Into Lacon we go. There we go. We stay in front for now. Just going to attempt to defensive drive really, really quickly. After a lap, we're now 2.1 behind Gasly. That's just the nature of the beast. They're going to really pull away. This is going to ruin my race. The AI's traction is way too strong, I've realized. It's just way too much. Because even when I get good traction out of a corner, they just completely floor it and leave me for dead. It's so frustrating. I definitely think it's intermediate conditions now. We've got to roll the dice, I think, if we're you know, going to pit or not. Because if the AI don't pit this lap, I need to give myself time to make the inters work. The rain's going to drop in 10 minutes completely. So it's going to drop really, really quickly. Question is, do I pit this up for inters and risk it, or do I stay out and hope the AI pit for inters and we go to the finish on wets? I'm going to roll the dice. Albon's out of the race. If that triggers the VSC, we're in the money. If it doesn't, then oh well. But I'm going to go for the inters. I'm going to try it. May as well. We're not going to score points anyway, so we'll go for the Hail Mary and hope for the best. There is no VSC, which is a shame. If there had been a VSC there, that would have been the call, the money call. But we can still get something out of this if the track dries out quick enough in these three laps. Go, go, go. Right, 2.5, let's go. We'll use Latifi in front as a reference in terms of pace. Oh, this is definitely into this. That traction was good. Good traction out of there. I'm happy with that. All right, let's see how it feels through a Rouge and Radion. Oh, that's fine. It's definitely into this. Okay. All right, I'm going to keep on the gap to Latifi. Let's see what it is after a couple of sectors. I really hope that AI don't pit. We need them to stay out to the end now. This is the gamble I've taken. If I'm going for this strategy, we need them to stay out. If they pit now, I'll be upset because I, I would have gone to the finish on wets and gambled it. But we need them to all stay out now. Let's see if they do. I've got a nice bit of fuel on board now, so I can use that as well. Going to use up all the overtake mode and all the rich mix here to try and close the gap. Okay, they're staying out. This is good. Let's hope now we that, that the track just completely dries out and we get the edge on these and we get the benefit of the intermediates. The rain has pretty much stopped almost, so those, hot, those uh, wet tires are going to be very slow. We've gained three seconds on the Tifi already. Two laps to go. This is looking good for us. I'm really, really happy with my decision. I think we could get something out of this because we're also going to score points anyway, so this is our best chance. Here we are then behind Latifi. This should be an easy move on the Williams driver. I think we're going to run out. We need one more lap after the last one to make something happen. Let's get past Latifi though, so it doesn't hold us up for the rest of the lap. Here we go, to the outside, using the space, keeping it flat around the outside. Let's try and get a teammate at least. Unfortunately, the track hasn't dried up enough. I really thought it would have dried up a little bit more than this. It is definitely intermediate, but, you know, just not enough pace. The AI are pretty quick around here, it seems. If I was driving a Mercedes and I'd gone for this strategy, having like been P1 and then uh, boxed for the Inters, it would have definitely worked out a lot better. But I need one more lap. I think one more lap would have made a huge difference. Leclerc wins it, though. We're three seconds a lap quicker, but it's not going to be enough. We might still be able to get Russell here, maybe to the line. If we use our pull of our engine mode, we can go flat through Blanchimont. Just got to turn the ERS mode off. Let's see, could there be one last position to gain, possibly? We are out of the RS for this lap, which is a shame. Through the fire chicane. Damn it, looks like we're not even close enough for us to hold on. So, in the end, it's disappointing, but we roll the dice, and that's what happens. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. Here's our winner, pulling their Ferrari into Park Fermi. What a fantastic race it was. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today?
It's a heroic effort for any driver to race in conditions like these, and seeing them fight their way to the front was very special indeed. They were able to find all the grip, all the good lines, and had the confidence to get on the power to top it all off. That's what pushed them into first place here today. Here come our winners now. A thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. Here we are then guys, looking at the final race results. Charles Leclerc picks up the win ahead of Max Verstappen and Valtteri Bottas here today. Sebastian Vettel P4, Lance Straw up in P5 in the racing point ahead of Ricardo Sainz, Kofiat up in 8th place and Hamilton only P9 ahead of Antonio Giovinazzi. So yeah, Hamilton only P9, that's quite surprising actually, but the bad news is Kofiat is in the points and also Giovinazzi as well. So that is going to mean we are going to lose some points as a team. Lando is 11th as other points with Gasly behind him. Perez, Ocon, Raikkonen, Magnussen, Grosjean, Mick, Russell, myself and Latifi with Albon, the only retirement from the race here today. We took a gamble. It didn't work out. But, you know, you have to try these things sometimes because I think, you know, on a different day it could have worked. Standings though, let's have a little look. And uh, we are P13 which is not too bad. You know, we lose two places as Stroll and Ocon overtake me, but, you know, we're still ahead of Kofia and that's all that matters. We are battling Alfa Tauri at the end of the day. Uh, Constructors-wise, we do lose out to P7. We are equal on points, but Alfa Tauri, of course, with the second place Kofia got in the last race, go ahead of us in the table because of a better result. And, uh, yeah, it is where it is. Alfa Romeo one point behind as well. It's all really, really close. But, guys, that is it for the Belgian Grand Prix. We're now going to move into the laptop and we're going to see what we can do heading into the next race at Monza. Do you think that grid penalty was justified? I mean, of course, you know. You rate the rules, you pay the price. Simple as that. Did you feel comfortable in the wet weather today? I was comfortable, but uh, it seems like we didn't have the pace. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a 50-50, really, but... Um, yeah, you know, the team did a good job. Can't complain once again. Your teammate beat you today. Was it a setup issue or something else? Um, you know, it's just one of them ones, really. I wouldn't say it's my loss, but their win, you know, I can't take it away from them. Great. Well, that's everything. Okay, so looking at the rivalry breakdown, Pierre scores a big result over us this weekend, and with one race to go, He's two points ahead of us. We're going to need a miracle heading into the next one at Monza. It could happen, you know, around Monza. It's very just down to straight line speed. So we can definitely just throw on some really skinny wings on our car and hope that it's enough to get the job done. We do just fall short of level 11 as a team, which is a shame. And we do miss out big time on the sponsor bonuses this weekend, which is really disappointing. So, yeah, it is a tough weekend. Not much of a cash boost either. So, um it's not going to change the actual currency that much, really. But we'll see what we can do heading into laptop time. Okay, so here we are then. It's time for some laptop time. We've got a couple of days until the Italian Grand Prix. So we will assign an activity. We don't have time for much more. We'll go for power team building because it's for the powertrain. We're heading into Monza next. So we'll go for that. Hopefully that will boost their morale a little bit. Um, first of all, though, facilities. We've got 3.74 million. We're going to strap on a fabrication one because that's going to give us a, the ability to get more upgrades onto the car uh, moving forward. And then in terms of R&D, one, you know, 1,369 points to spend. That's quite a lot. So uh, first and foremost, engine. Now, um, obviously, it's not going to arrive in time for Monza. I'd love to add this one here, the cylinder head for major engine power. We do need to improve because we are slipping away a little bit on the engine side of things, but the chassis is still very poor. Um, so bearing that in mind, I am tempted to do both of these minor ones. Um, hope they arrive. So we're going to go for that. I'm thinking ahead here. So the Singapore Grand Prix, which is the one that these upgrades should arrive for. We'll try and stomach the next race and suffer it with, you know, the current car we have. Um, but we've got two more chassis upgrades on the way. And the aerodynamic facility has now been improved. So all in, we've got a few upgrades that, you know, should be arriving soon. And that should hopefully help us out. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty much that is all, guys. We've spent our money and our RMD points. We're now going to sim ahead and uh, get ready for the next race in Italy. And there we go then, we're ready to go, and uh, looks like everything is looking still okay. 
as um, yeah, we're making slow progress, but hopefully we can you know set the foundations with the facilities for next season. So make sure we get all of this prepared, and that will hopefully help us out quite a lot. But uh, yeah, guys, that is going to be it from me here today for this episode of Career Mode. If you guys enjoyed it, then drop me a like and subscribe if you are new for daily Formula One content on the channel. Also, click the bell icon, guys, to be notified when new content does go live, and also check out the two videos on your screen right now. I'm trying to get 50k subs, guys, by the end of the year. So any help would be massively appreciated. But that is it from me here today. And I'll see you all next time in my next episode for the Italian Grand Prix. But until then, it's goodbye from me.